He is known for being one of the founders of analytic philosophy and leading the turn from idealism in British philosophy. He is recognized for advocating common sense concepts and making significant contributions to ethics, epistemology, and metaphysics. He is George Edward Moore. In the early 20th century, a philosopher emerged from the realm of British academia who would go on to become a revered figure in the world of philosophy. His name was George Edward Moore, and he was hailed as one of the founders of analytic philosophy, alongside esteemed thinkers such as Bertrand Russell and Ludwig Wittgenstein. Born with an exceptional personality and moral character, Moore's influence extended beyond his academic pursuits. As a professor of philosophy at the University of Cambridge, he played a pivotal role in steering British philosophy away from idealism towards a more practical and common-sense approach. His teachings encompassed a wide range of philosophical fields, including ethics, epistemology, and metaphysics, leaving an indelible mark on the discipline. Moore's impact was not limited to the confines of academia. He was a member of the renowned Cambridge Apostles, a select group of intellectuals who shaped intellectual discourse during their time. Additionally, he chaired the prestigious Cambridge University Moral Sciences Club for over three decades, fostering intellectual exchange and debate amongst his peers. Beyond his professional endeavors, Moore was also a passionate humanist, serving as the president of the British Ethical Union in the mid-1930s. His commitment to ethical principles and his unwavering belief in the power of reason earned him the admiration and respect of his contemporaries, leading Ray Monk, a prominent philosopher and biographer, to deem Moore as the most revered philosopher of his era. George Edward Moore's legacy continues to inspire generations of philosophers, with his contributions to analytic philosophy and his commitment to moral values leaving an indelible impact on the field. His exceptional personality and moral character, combined with his intellectual prowess, solidified his position as a true titan of philosophical thought, forever celebrated for his profound influence on the discipline. G. E. E. Moore, one of the most influential philosophers of the 20th century, revolutionized the field with his groundbreaking work on ethics and the naturalistic fallacy. He argued that philosophical arguments often suffer from a confusion between the use of a term in a particular argument and its definition, which he referred to as the naturalistic fallacy. Moore believed that even if ethical arguments claim that certain properties make something good, they do not provide a definition for the term good. According to Moore, the property of goodness cannot be defined, it can only be shown and grasped. Moore's argument for the indefinability of good is often called the open question argument, which he presented in his influential work Principia Ethica. He pointed to the nature of statements like anything that is pleasant is also good, and the possibility of asking questions such as, is it good that X is pleasant? Moore argued that these questions remain open and significant, regardless of what is substituted for pleasure. This led him to conclude that any analysis of value is bound to fail, as value is inherently indefinable. Critics of Moore's argument suggest that he is appealing to general puzzles concerning analysis rather than revealing anything special about value. However, Moore contended that goodness cannot be analyzed in terms of any other property. He emphasized that good cannot be defined by explaining it in other words, it can only be pointed to and recognized. Moore also categorized good as a non-natural property, meaning it cannot be empirically or scientifically tested or verified. To determine questions of intrinsic goodness, Moore proposed appealing to what he called moral intuitions. These are self-evident propositions that recommend themselves to moral reflection but are not susceptible to direct proof or disproof. Moore's view distinguished itself from deontological intuitionists who believed that intuitions could determine what actions are right or required by duty. Instead, Moore argued that intuitions reveal what things are good in themselves, as ends to be pursued. According to Moore, right actions are those that produce the most good. However, he acknowledged the difficulty of fully considering the consequences of most actions, especially long-term consequences. As a result, Moore suggested that the definition of duty should be limited to what generally produces better results than probable alternatives in the relatively near future. He also defined virtues, like honesty, as permanent dispositions to perform duties. G. E. Moore's philosophy on ethics and the naturalistic fallacy continues to shape our understanding of value and morality. His emphasis on the indefinability of good challenges us to recognize the complexities and nuances of ethical arguments. By appealing to moral intuitions, we can navigate ethical dilemmas and strive to pursue actions that generate the most good in our daily lives. G. E. Moore, one of the most influential philosophers of the 20th century, embarked on a philosophical journey that would challenge the prevailing idealism in British philosophy. Breaking away from the dominant school of thought, Moore defended what he believed to be a common sense form of realism. In his 1925 essay, A Defense of Common Sense, he passionately argued against idealism and skepticism toward the external world. 
Moore's defense rested on the idea that skeptics and idealists could not provide compelling reasons to accept their metaphysical premises. He maintained that these premises were less plausible than the reasons we have for accepting the common sense claims about our knowledge of the world. To emphasize this point, Moore presented a striking argument in his 1939 essay, Proof of an External World. In this essay, Moore dramatically raised his right hand and declared, here is one hand. He then raised his left hand and proclaimed, and here is another. By doing so, he concluded that there must be at least two external objects in the world, thus establishing his knowledge of the existence of an external world. This simple yet powerful argument aimed to challenge skepticism and reaffirm the reality of our surroundings. However, Moore's argument did not convince everyone prone to skeptical doubts. Critics pointed out that his method relied heavily on philosophical intuitions that were far less reliable than the common sense claims they purported to refute. Nevertheless, Moore staunchly defended his position, arguing that skeptical arguments often relied on these intuitions, which lacked the solid foundation of our everyday experiences. Moore's philosophical development, particularly his break from idealism and his defense of common sense realism, marked a significant turning point in the field of philosophy. His argument for the existence of an external world challenged the prevailing skepticism of his time and continues to provoke thought and discussion to this day. G. E. Moore, known for his profound contributions to philosophy, had a particular insight that continues to captivate thinkers even today. He introduced a puzzle that became famously known as, Moore's Paradox. This paradox revolved around a seemingly contradictory statement, it is raining, but I do not believe it is raining. The puzzle intrigued many because it appeared impossible for anyone to assert such a sentence consistently. However, upon closer examination, there was no logical contradiction between the two parts of the statement. The first part was a factual observation about the weather, while the second part referred to a person's belief about the weather. Logically, it was entirely possible for it to rain while someone did not believe it was raining. The paradox not only fascinated Moore but also captured the attention of Ludwig Wittgenstein, another renowned philosopher. Wittgenstein described Moore's paradox as the most impressive philosophical insight ever introduced by Moore. The impact of this puzzle was so profound that when Wittgenstein first encountered it, he couldn't contain his curiosity. He promptly rushed to Moore's lodgings, waking him up from his sleep, and demanded that Moore repeat the entire lecture on the paradox. This paradox of Moore's has implications beyond the realm of philosophy. It prompts us to reflect on the nature of belief, perception, and the complexities of human cognition. In our daily lives, we often encounter situations where our beliefs may not align with objective reality. Moore's paradox serves as a reminder that our beliefs and perceptions can sometimes be at odds with the facts of the world around us. By recognizing the existence of this paradox, we can approach our daily interactions with a greater sense of humility and open-mindedness. It encourages us to question our own beliefs and consider the possibility that we may be mistaken, even when the evidence seems clear. Embracing this intellectual honesty allows us to navigate the complexities of life with a more nuanced understanding of ourselves and the world. George Edward Moore, known as G. E. Moore, was a philosopher who introduced the concept of organic wholes in philosophy. He believed that the value of a whole cannot be assumed to be the same as the sum of the values of its parts. In other words, a moral scenario is not simply the sum of its individual components, but rather, its value is often created by the relationships between those parts. Moore used the analogy of a biological organism to explain this concept. Just as a human brain exhibits the capacity for thought, even though none of its individual neurons possess that capacity, a moral scenario can have a value that far exceeds the sum of its component parts. It is the interactions and connections between these parts that give rise to the overall value. To illustrate this principle, Moore considered the example of a consciousness experiencing a beautiful object. When we isolate the concept of a beautiful object or consciousness itself, their individual values may not seem particularly significant. However, when we consider the total value of a consciousness experiencing a beautiful object, it becomes evident that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Moore's philosophy of organic wholes has practical implications for our daily lives. It reminds us to look beyond the individual elements of a situation and consider the relationships and interactions between them. By doing so, we can gain a deeper understanding of the overall value and significance of a moral scenario. It encourages us to appreciate the complexity and interconnectedness of different aspects of life, leading to a more nuanced and holistic approach to decision-making. In conclusion, G. E. Moore's philosophy of organic wholes emphasizes that the value of a whole is not equal to the sum of its parts. By recognizing the importance of relationships and interactions between these parts, we can gain a deeper understanding of the overall value and make more informed decisions in our daily lives.
Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.